All right. So uh, last time we talked about uh, the methods that we can use to determine the equilibrium constant for reactions in aqueous solution. So we said one way was to just look it up, but that means you'll have to know what it is you're looking for. So you can't have to know the names like Ka, Kb, Ksp, Kf. Right. Second, me second method is just to run the reaction in the lab. Okay. Uh, try find a, find a way to measure the activities at equilibrium, and then that will give you your equilibrium constant. You just plug it into your expression for the equilibrium constant. Uh, the problem there is uh, because we're measuring concentrate. If you're measuring concentration in the, concentrations in the lab, you might find your numbers are off, somewhat off from the literature values because the ones in the literature actually do use con activities. Whereas where you, when you make your measurements in freshman chemistry lab, you just do concentrations. That's just an approximation. So don't be, don't be too disconcerted if you did an experiment in the lab, in freshman chemistry lab, and you find that your KEQ is way off the mark. Okay? Uh, that we are just making an approximation when we're using concentrations as our activities. So in a higher level class, you learn a, a better way of doing it. Okay. Uh, Method three is if you know the KEQs for other reactions, you can figure out the K, you might be able to figure out the KEQ for your reaction. And we talked about this before in general terms. So let's just, we can apply it to aqueous reactions as well. Let's just review what we said before that if, if you write the reaction as A going to B and the KEQ happens to be X, if you flip that reaction, what's your KEQ? one over x, right? So instead of b over a at equilibrium, you would calculate the ratio of a over b. So, okay, that's what you need. What if you have add two reactions together? Like this one, a going to b and c going to d. If you add these, you have a times plus c gives you b plus d. What's the KEQ for this? That would just be the product of the two equilibrium constants, right? Because K1 here would be B over A, and K2, which is our X, we call that X, and K2, which we call Y here, is going to be D over C. And you can see that K3, KEQ for the overall reaction, would just be B times D over C times A. Okay, uh, let me write that this, oops, let me write it A times C. And you can identify this as K1, and this is as K2, so this is X times Y. Okay, so let's apply these to the following. Suppose you wanted to know the KEQ for this reaction. H plus plus hydroxide gives you water. Well, you can, this is what you get if, for example, if you have a reaction between a strong acid and a strong base, if you remember, you have a strong acid and a strong base, the H plus from the strong acid plus the hydroxide from the strong base will give you water, right? That's the net ionic equation for it. But you'll realize that you realize that this is just the, the opposite of the auto ionization of water. So KEQ for this reaction, okay? For the auto ionization of water is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So what's the KEQ for this one? If you flip it, this is just going to be 1 over KW, which is going to be 1 over 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So that's going to be 1.00 times 10 to the 14. Now, look at that number. Is that a large, very large number or a very small number? Very, very large numbers. So you would expect anytime you put H plus and hydroxide together in water, they're pretty much going to be uh, neutral. Uh, you, you pretty much have a complete neutralization. You have very, uh, your limiting reactants will pretty much be uh, consumed. You have trace amounts of the limiting reactant. Okay. So if you have a strong acid, strong base reaction in the lab, you would expect complete reaction pretty much. Okay. So you you. The, in this case, the, the equilibrium will be all the way to the product side because you have a very large equilibrium constant. How about this one? You have two reactions. Hx gives you H plus plus X minus. The KEQ for this, you can look it up. It's the Ka of Hx. Okay? 
And we've already seen that H plus plus hydroxide gives you to give you water has a KEQ of one over KW. This should be one point zero zero times ten to the fourteen. I made a mistake there, right? That's one over KW. So what would be the KB of X minus? Well, you have to know what's the reaction if you want the KA if the equilibrium constant is KB, what's our reaction? The base is X minus. If it's behaving like a base, it should be reacting with one. Base is a proton acceptor. So it will be accepting a proton from water. So the reaction we're interested in is between X minus and water, giving you, if it's behaving like a base, it should generate hydroxide and it should accept a proton from water, giving you HX plus OH minus. So how can we combine these two reactions to give you this reaction? Think about something similar to Hess's law, right? What would that be? You want HX on the other side, right? So you reverse the first one. So you write the first one in reverse. So you have H plus plus X minus gives you HX. What's the K, KEQ for this? going to be 1 over Ka of Hx, right? You're flipping that one. And then you keep this one as is. Oops, do you flip the other one too? This one. Yeah, you flip it too, right? You want hydroxide on the product side, so you flip that one. So you write H2O. Let me write it in black. H2O yields H plus plus X minus. You want H2O on the left side, see? H2O plus, I'm oh, sorry, H plus plus hydroxide. What's the K for this? That's just KW, right? So if you add these two, what do you get? Overall reaction is H plus cancels out. So you have H2O plus X minus, which is what you want on the left, right? Yields HX plus hydroxide on the right. So what's the equilibrium constant for this? Equilibrium constant for this is called the KB of X minus, and that's equal to what? The product of this and that, right? So it's KW times 1 over Ka of Hx. Okay? So generally what you find is this. Let's re rearrange this. Let's put these two together. You'll find that if you have Kb of x minus, you multiply that. Now that's equal to Kw over the Ka of Hx. Okay, in other words, if you multiply the KB and the KA for a conjugate pair, you get KW. Okay? So KA of a, an acid times the KB of its conjugate base will give you KW. Or if you take logs, PKA plus PKB will be equal to PKW. And what's PKW? 14, right? Remember, KW is 10 to the negative 14. Negative log of 10 to the negative 14 is 14. So the PKs will add up to 14. The product of the KA and KW would be 10 to the negative 14. It's going to be equal to KW. All right.